to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today's video is me following through on one of the things I said I would do in my wish list, not once, but twice. Last year I said I would be using the liquidity in my collection to fund pieces because where am I going to take them when I'm not here anymore? I really want to enjoy this luxury addiction that I have in the here and now and the reality is I'm now buying pieces that require a lot more investment and I'm wearing them in a more occasional kind of jewelry like way where they really are um, an accessory to my outfit as opposed to necessarily being a practical thing and I think you would have seen the trends in some of those pieces that I've been buying particularly in 2023 and a lot of those they were not funded by getting some cashola from my collection. I am about to go and pick up a beautiful piece that I have been considering for probably the best part of four weeks now. It has been one of those slow burns and something that continues to come back and I think about to the extent that last weekend when I went to ce celebrate the first anniversary of Louis Vuitton's new flagship store here in Brisbane, I revisited <laughs> my thinking and over this week made a decision and I'm on my way in just you know a few minutes to go and select or pick up that piece and so I thought I would make this video now um, to kind of get it stuck in my head what I'm prepared to let go of because I'm just not getting the same I don't know the same kicks out of it and everything in my wardrobe I love and all of these pieces I love but I'm not I'm not drawn to wearing them like I feel like I should be and so therefore they will be on the shopping block now please don't contact me about these pieces um, in time to come they will be listed by Connor in his consignment store called Conrad's closet which I'll link below in the description box so go follow him on Instagram keep an eye on the stories make sure you hit the notifications because when they pop up I'm pretty sure some of these ones they will go pretty quickly. They'll go quicker than my Balenciaga tote that's for sure because he's still got that one and that's been a long time. Understandable I know. The first piece on the chopping block, small, we're going to build up, we're going to build up. It is the pouch from my Neverfull MM World Tour. Now my MM World Tour I hardly use now since I've gotten my GM Neverfull but it came with a pouch and it's the most beautiful little pouch. It doesn't have my name on it. And the MM I can't sell because it has my name on it. But the pouch has been sitting in my SLG accessories drawer since I've had it. I've really never used it. It has the black leather and it has these gorgeous three little, you know, silk screened prints. And it also has the red interior with a little side pocket. It's, um, it's just not being used and I know so many people buy these as one of their entry level pieces to Louis Vuitton. This one's a bit different. It may appeal to you or someone you know. Needless to say, it, um, it's time to leave my collection, as cute as it is. The next piece might shock a few of you because it's practically a neutral, but I think that's exactly why it probably doesn't fit in my wardrobe. And uh, <laughs> here we go. It's my Fendi Zucca Mini Baguette in this gorgeous tobacco colour with gold hardware. It is has a detachable top handle and a long uh, crossbody strap. You can wear this bag eight ways. Why? Because every time I wear my Zucca blazer or dress, I want a contrasting bag. I did wear it once with the Zucca on Zucca. I loved it. It was a vibe that one time. But now when I find myself going to pick a little baguette to wear just for a run to the shops, I pick the fuchsia, I pick the silver, I pick my lilac. I don't, I don't pick this one. And it just sits there most of the time and it's beautiful and yeah, I, I, I think given that there are other things that I want to bring in and this one, you know, it's, it's a great piece. I always say the baguette, the mini baguette in particular, is the piece that I recommend starting your Fendi collection with. Yeah, starting, I'm, I'm well beyond that now. I have a couple of little Louis Vuitton monogram pieces that I probably use more so because they are coated canvas, whereas this one is not. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that. 
This one might shock a few of you. <laughs> they might all shock a few of you. <sighs> yep. <laughs> the My Lady Dior in medium in the wicker. Um, this one has the the traditional oblique pattern. This bag went bananas when I bought it in kind of January 2021, I want to say it was. Maybe it was 2022. It has the great pouch opening, which is so good for a Dior bag. And it has an adjustable Dior guitar strap as well. Why am I selling this? Well, everything changed when I found the Louis Vuitton Wicker Capucine in Talmina. Let me put a picture up over here to remind you. And when I consider how often I have reached for that bag compared to this one, since I've had that bag, I've reached for it a lot more. So as much as I adore the beautiful workmanship in this piece, I love the cool tones of the navy. <sighs> I am fighting a losing battle having duplicates and sometimes that's just the reality like you might say why did you buy the Wicker Capucine if you thought that it might compete with this one well I'm open to that I'm open to seeing which one I love more and I think that's part of the privilege of being able to try these things and so um, if one is to go it's more likely going to be this one so I hope she goes to a good home because she has been loved this one I have teased for quite a while and uh, it's finally come to that point where I'm prepared to say goodbye to the bag that started my whole YouTube channel. The Fendi Iconic Mini Peekaboo in the Ramano leather with the Celeria stitching. Um, this one has palladium hardware. It is like just the most beautiful, supple, delicious leather. Um, I always wanted a white bag and again me and neutrals it's a problem that I have is that I want one because I think I should have one and then they just don't work out for me and I just need to learn that right <laughs> inside of all of the celery they have a makers plate um, and then numbered and yeah this one comes with an adjustable uh, seven adjustments crossbody strap um, it is a beautiful bag. It looks gorgeous with a little Fendi wrappy across the handle. It's, you know, it goes with everything because it's not stark white. It's like an off-white. I mean, let me close this shutter a little bit. You can kind of see it's, um, it's a very neutral white and with this texture, it just makes it very beautiful to wear, especially with your upcoming spring summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Hint, hint. She stayed at the back of my cupboard my storage for the last few years and it's such a shame the beauty of these ones is that they also have feet as well it will come with the raincoat and everything um, it's not regretful it's just an evolution of my style and knowing what works for me and what I'm drawn to what I pick up and it's it's not this one and then finally yeah the thumbnail wasn't clickbait it's real my and just like that limited edition Sex in the City Fuchsia Sequin Baguette. This bag and I, we've been through some trials together. If you have a look at it, it's got the gorgeous little glittery buckle. The colour of this fuchsia, I'll reopen the, um, the shutter there. It's really vibrant, a really cool pink. It is not, it's almost the same pink actually as the ones that were in Fendi's like um, for winter collection last year, um, where the mini... Mm, where this one came from so pretty close but this one has silver hardware and the ones from last year had gold hardware this one is the and just like that limited edition so the difference is inside of the ones from for winter last year they have a bronze interior this one has a beautiful emerald green interior I have Zimoni inserts inside of all of mine and it obviously has the um, the shoulder strap which didn't get a lot of use to be honest when I purchased this bag it did have some sequins go missing off the back and from that repair it has been repaired and reinforced to the extent that um, yeah I doubt any sequins will be falling off this thing for quite a long time unless it absolutely goes through the ringer but it's in otherwise you know perfect condition it it is probably a little bit of a hint but um, 
the bag that I'm going to pick up shortly is probably going to have quite a similar functionality to this one and if I'm choosing between this one and this one <laughs> is it obvious is it obvious which one I would choose I think these two already probably compete with each other a little bit and then if I bring this other one into my collection which I'm going to it makes this one a dust collector and I don't want this for this very exclusive piece. This is one that I had to pre-order six months in advance from the UK because it never came to Australia and waited very, very patiently um, to receive it. And after going through all of that, I've thought very long and hard about it, but it's been really lovely to own it. I've loved to put some outfits together with it, but the reality is it doesn't make me feel the same way as this one does because I don't know why it just it's so beautiful but yeah I, I, I have once said I prefer this to this but when it comes to which one I would keep in my collection it's the purple rain so yeah my and just like that limited Fendi fuchsia pink sequin baguette is going to find a new home. Do I have regrets, remorse, or am I feeling icky or panicky about this? I, I actually am not. I've said a bunch of times I'm not sentimental about these pieces, yet I keep them. And I really wanted to be mindful and intentional about how I shop for luxury this year, um, as opposed to not buying anything. And this, this piece, when I get it and show you, I think you'll understand it is such a precious treasure it is so beautiful um, I'm like why am I bringing this into my collection and when am I going to use it and what is it going to compete with and how much out-of-pocket do I really want to spend on this when I have all this value in my collection that I am not using I feel good about it and I I'll feel better about it when they're all packaged up and they've gone to Connor and they're no longer in my eyesight, <laughs> making me second guess my decisions. Not because I think I will be remorseful or they're bags that I would buy back, more so just because I'm like, well, do I really need to sell them? And I guess the answer to that is no. Do I want to? Do I want to use the things that I have? Yes, I do. And these are pieces that, yeah, they just, over the last year or so, they just haven't gotten any time. So, yeah. What do you think? Are you interested? If you are, as I said, please go and check out Connor's Instagram, Conrad's Closet. Not The Closet by Connor. That's his YouTube Instagram, Conrad's Closet is the consignment business so the link will be in the description box down below you can contact him through that account and let him know what you're interested in and if you can do a deal before he posts them great um, but you know otherwise keep an eye on the stories because that's where they'll be interested to know what you think of my decisions here and um, definitely consider subscribing because you won't want to miss my next unboxing until then ciao